Well, the Democratic Republic of Congo military forces are now in control of the strategic eastern city of Goma after the pullout of the M23 rebel forces. But the rebels remain close, camped out just a mere three kilometers outside of the city. The United Nations Security Council unanimously adopted a resolution last month that extended the arms embargo on the DRC while expressing its intention to consider additional sanctions against the leadership of the M23 rebel fighters. A viewer is Pond Deho takes a closer look at the crisis in the DRC. Rwandan support for rebels in neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo may be more widespread than previously believed. According to a report released in November by the UN panel of experts, the report noted that Rwanda continues to violate the arms embargo by providing direct military support to M23 rebels, distributing arms, ammunition, facilitating recruitment, and dispensing intelligence and political advice. Dr. Teujen Ludasingwa, a former top aide of Rwandan President Paul Kagame, now a fierce critic of the regime, agrees with the report. He says despite public denials, President Paul Kagame's regime is directly involved. For us who belong to the region, even without actually the group of experts report, we know very well that uh, Rwanda primarily and uh, to a large extent Uganda as well, have been actually meddling in the affairs of Democratic Republic of Congo since 1996. So there is a legacy, it's a continuing legacy. and. Uh, there is every evidence to point uh, that actually the recent uh, escalation of conflict in Congo is a creation by Rwanda and Uganda. The M23 rebels have withdrawn, at least for now, from the eastern city of Goma in the DRC, following an agreement reached with rebels that preceded meetings with regional leaders in the Ugandan capital, Kampala. Congolese activist Yusuf Buzigio Prosper says that at the beginning of their conflict with the government, nobody took the M23 rebels seriously. But once they took Goma, things changed, and President Joseph Kabila should be held accountable. What I'm saying is that this is what the Congolese want to see. They want to see a government which is responsible a government which will deal with their issues, a government which will deliver them services, a government which will allow them to be free in their land and enjoy everything which they have on that land. The international community has been pushing for sanctions that encompass an arms embargo against all armed groups, including M23 rebels and a travel ban and asset freezes against individuals or entities that have violated the embargo. But uh, Prosper disagrees with this notion. Do the international community really, really have a say in this matter? Because the international community has been in Congo for more than 10 years with MONUSCO. The same very MONUSCO. They are in Walikale. 10 miles away from Walikale, women are being raped. Vulnerable people are being scattered over, all over their land by militias. The international community has no more authority, more authority to discuss this matter. Critics of Rwanda and Uganda say both governments have also cooperated to support the creation and expansion of the political branch of M23. But both governments vehemently deny backing the M23 rebels. Dr. Rudasingwa warns that observers monitoring the Congo crisis should look at it from the context of these two leaders wanting to be relevant to the international community. I think it points to the character and the state of governance in Uganda and Rwanda because most of these problems that we can see in Congo are more or less an extension of the problems that have not been resolved within Rwanda itself and uh, to a large extent uh, in, in Uganda itself. The international community is optimistic that the rebels pull out from Goma might signal progress in efforts to negotiate a peace deal. But only time will tell. Meanwhile, the rebels have given no indication they are ending their eight-month insurgency. Paul Ndiho, VOA News.